The Historical Society of Santuit and Catuit, also known by its slightly shorter name, the Catuit Historical Society, is located about 50 miles to the east of the Old Colony History Museum. Traditionally, these were Wampanoag lands. Catuit means place of the council, and Santuit means place of the sachems, so this area saw many gatherings of tribal leaders. Santuit Pond provided resources such as herring to the indigenous people. When English settlers began arriving in the area in the mid-1600s, it became an important connection point between the mainland and the island of Nantucket. Today, Catuit and Santuit are historic villages within the town of Barnstable that have deep maritime and agricultural roots and are home to both year-round and seasonal residents. We're excited to share this virtual visit to the campus of the Historical Society of Santuit and Catuit. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Victoria Vieira, and I'm the Vice President of the Historical Society of Catuit and Santuit. And we're here at our Homestead Museum, the Samuel Dottridge House. This house is lots of fun to visit. It's got some very interesting stories behind it. And we are now in the kitchen, which is the busiest place of the house. This is where most of the action took place didn't use the parlor until the visitors came, and didn't use the bedroom until it was time to go to sleep. So otherwise you were here in the kitchen and Mrs. Dottridge was entertaining you. And she had some great stories from what I've heard. This house itself was moved to Catuit in approximately 1811, could have been 1812, not sure, um, by Samuel and his wife Abigail, who lived down in Brewster. Samuel came to an America as an indentured servant um, or apprentice, and he learned the art of carpentry. When his indenture was over, his apprenticeship was over, whichever is you want to call it, he had fallen in love with a beautiful widow whose husband had been lost at sea, Abigail, and he immediately married her. He had a friend whose last name was Nickerson. If you drive around Catuit, you will see Nickerson often. And his friend said that the Nickerson brothers had found this great place and it was going to be on the map. And Sam needed to move his family to Catuit. And Sam did just that. But along with moving his family, he also moved this house. In those days, there was not a lot of timber. It had been used to build boats or it had been used to keep the house warm. So you did not go to the lumber yard and get plywood for your house. You just took the house with you. This house was moved on a sled by 17 yoke of oxen. So there's two, yoke, two oxen in a yoke. That makes 34 oxen. From Brewster to Catuit, it took about three and a half weeks. I can't imagine what people did when they saw this coming down the street. Every night they stopped, they had to let the oxen roam and get their own food. Then they put themselves all back together the next day and continued on. And of course, you know, rain, wind, snow, all of that slowed the progress. Plus, they didn't have roads like we have now. I mean, we do have traffic now, but they had little tiny, they, they sometimes had to make the roads bigger to get this house down them. So the house originally was that way on Ocean View Avenue facing the water. Um, it was moved here later uh, because it was given to us by Mrs. Anita Crawford. She and her husband owned the Pines Hotel, one of the three hotels that used to be in Catuit. And that surprises everyone because there's not a whole lot here anymore. But we were very bustling in the 1800s. So she owned this and it was working 
it was a working building. It was the laundry of the hotel. But when the hotel was closing, she knew it was historic, and she moved it to this property, and she set out on a campaign to make money to make this place happen. It was 1955. So she is um, instrumental as well as Mrs. Flossie Shaw, her friend, and they made this what it is today. They, if you went to dinner at their house, look out because they were gonna ask you for money. So we are in this beautiful kitchen area. You'll see that we have a lovely modern cooking area here with a beehive oven and a, a fireplace. You notice that this fireplace doesn't go as far back as many. That's because it was easier for heating and it cooked faster. Uh, we've had that redone a few times since the original was put in. You also see this lovely, interesting piece over here, which we use as a wood crib now for the wood that goes into the fireplace. But this is where the toddlers played while mom was cooking in the oven over there. Uh, we also have a spinning wheel where she would be spinning some flax. We have butter churns. Um, and we have certain kinds of uh, utensils that were used in the kitchen and a collection of molds, which we don't use anymore, but um, it seems that gelled molds, not jello, but gelled molds were very in in the Victorian time. So we have this lovely spice box also. If you open it up, the spices are no longer there. I think some of the spices are still there, but the smells remain. And it's just fantastic. There's pepper, there's mustard, nutmegs, uh, mace, allspice, cinnamon, cloves, ginger, the best spices that you could use. Uh, from what we know, Mrs. Dockridge was a wonderful cook using these spices. Most of the things that you see in this house are not original to the house because it had been used for a lot of other things. But we do have one piece that Samuel built, and we'll show you that when we get to another room. This room is the parlor of the Samuel Dottridge Homestead. It was traditionally where you put all of the good things so that you could show off when you had company. And we have it situated, the furniture is situated in a way that we think it would have been. And we think this kind of furniture would have been used, although, as I said, it is not original. This, however, is a secretary that was built by Samuel Dottridge. And he did a lot of his work right here. And it was, says it was built in the 1830s. So Sam wrote his letters and sent his bills right here at this. I'm not sure if this desk was in this room, but it's a good guess. Uh, this room also has um, a piano clavichord. It doesn't work, but there probably would have been musical instruments used in here. Um, there probably would have been a very nice grandfather's clock or some kind of a clock that perhaps Samuel himself had made and a little bit of storage and a little bit of show-off place for the china. And you would have maybe served tea in here or even a dinner in here. It wasn't just to sit down like a living room nowadays is. Mrs. Dottridge might have asked you to come in and she would prepare her tea for you right here at, this, at a table similar to this. I'd also like to point out the floor. This is a stenciled, painted floor. Again, not 100% sure that this is what was here, but Mrs. Crawford and Mrs. Shaw did extensive research uh, around the Sturbridge Village area. And this is what they saw from the buildings that were from the same period as this home. So they had commissioned someone to do this. I'm sure they got them at much less price because 
Miss Nita, as we used to call her, <laughs> could talk you into doing anything. But we think it's a good representation of what a floor might have looked like. It was very expensive to get a carpet, and that's why they painted the floor. Now, if you were a captain and you lived in one of the houses across the street, you probably had beautiful oriental rugs, but that's because you had been to the Orient and brought them back for your wife who was mad that you were away for so long. So Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Dottridge did not spend much time apart and they have still got a lovely floor, I think. We're now in the master bedroom, and it is the, also the only bedroom. The children slept upstairs in the attic, which was heated by any leftover heat from the fireplaces. There are three in this house. Um, I'm glad I wasn't up there, but that's okay. And this is where Abigail and Sam would have stayed. We also are, we're, this is quite a lovely bedroom because it also includes um, an ensuite bath right here and everyone would have taken their baths there or in the kitchen, depends, um, once a week. And you started out with the cleanest water and it went from the oldest person to the youngest. So if you were the youngest, you might not be as clean as your dad or your mom. <laughs> and this is a bed representative of the time that we're talking about. And I wanna show you what's going on in a bed like this. There's no mattresses and box springs. There are mattresses and they're down filled, feather filled. And underneath, this is your box spring. So this is called a tied rope bed. And you can imagine that rope stretches and it could become a problem. And you could end up with getting into bed in the, at night and being all the way down to the floor in the morning if you weren't careful, which is why you have one of these which is a rope tightener. And that it, you would tighten this up and then you would go to bed. And that's where the expression sleep tight comes from. Sleep with a tight, in a tight um, bed and don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> I don't think there was a big bed bug problem in Katuit, but they've always been around. Uh, the other thing we have that would be used on a cold winter's night is a bed warmer. And what would happen is you put hot coals from the fire inside the bed warmer, and then you would run it slowly between the sheets to warm up the bed before it, because it could get pretty cold in Gatuit in those days. It doesn't get quite so cold anymore, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, however you want to look at it. And now if we could draw our attention up here, what we have on this wall is a beautiful family tree. And it's been done in calligraphy. A great historian in this town who is no longer with us, Jim Gould, did all of the looking up of, of the families and the backgrounds. And our Samuel is right here. And if you go all the way down to the very bottom, you will see people all the way across who are still alive now. And I can tell you for sure that everyone from here to the right is living in Katuit. So I think that's, that's a great thing to have on hand to show people how much this really brings in. It's, it's very current. It stays current. Those people are right down the street. We can call them up. Uh, a few of them are docents at the museum and uh, we love to have them come. And it just means a lot to us that people we know are represented here in this house. We're in the birthing room, which is right off of the kitchen. It's actually, the way it's painted, and the colors that are chosen, these colors were under here. Um, years and years and years of paint was scraped, and this is as close as we can get to the original colors. So this was a very 
I think a very calming, relaxing room, which I think you might want if you were in labor, because this is where you went if you had a baby. It is also where you went if you were sick, if the kids got the flu or whatever, they, they didn't call it the flu at that time. But you, you came in here to be away from the rest of the family and to be quiet. We don't have it set up as that. We have it set up as a children's room so that we can show you some of the artifacts that we have that would have been used by children in the early 1800s. And we have some beautiful children's clothing here that is taken care of by our former curator. And we have some, a couple of doll carriages and some beautiful little ladies here who have been to the doll hospital and been rehabilitated. And I think they're looking really good because they are well over 150 years old. And I plan to look that good when I'm over 150 years old. There's a dollhouse. That's nothing new. They've been around for a long time. A cooking area, a little child's kitchen, some dominoes, some playing cards, children's shoes over here, which I think are adorable. These are not dolls' shoes. They are children's shoes. And we have a children's tea set. And we have some intra, and we don't have a hole in the wall. We took this apart so that you could see how the houses were built. It was not studs and, and um, wallboard or anything like it is now. It was laths and plaster and the outside wall. So you can imagine insulation didn't really exist or make its way known and the floor was not always set on a, a brick or a concrete foundation also there was not usually a basement so a lot of wind came up through the floors and word has it around the historical society that the sails of the ships when they were old were used under the floorboards of the house with hay as insulation I'd like to tell you a few of the things that are offered here at the Katuit and Santuit Historical Society. First of all, we open Memorial Day until Christmas, and we are open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 10 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. Please come by and visit us. There are docents on duty to give you a tour, and there's always someone here to open the gift shop, even if it's not one of those days, because this is the best gift shop you're ever going to find. I'll tell you, at least in, on the cake. <laughs> Some of our programs that we offer for you during the summer are Chronicles Lecture Series at the Katuit Library, and that is every third Thursday between June and October. History Uncorked happens right out here on our lawn, and we have wine for you and you can tour the museum, have a private tour, ask any questions, and we'll always feature at one of these some, something from the museum um, that will let you see more about. You can actually touch it, um, and we'll give you information on it. On it. It's an artifact every month. We have um, historic walks, two of those, one in June and one in September. They're always somewhat different. The, uh, the June walk starts right here and goes down Main Street. You'll see all of the captain's houses and there are a lot. You go down around the Loop Beach and back up on Cross Street and back up here to the Historical Society. It is less than a mile but there are 36 houses. So they're packed right in there. And we have our wonderful Tommy Burgess from Katuit who is a former history teacher and tells the best stories around and Tommy leads both of these walks. The September walk is going into the village of Santuit. So you'll get to see that. That's the first time we've headed up there. So there's a lot to see there and some beautiful houses. We don't go in the houses, we just walk by them and tell you about them. Um, and we also have Historic Homes of Katuit, which is on our website. And we received a grant for that 
and not all of the houses are on it yet, but any home that is a historic home and has a plaque from us, which you can get if you own a historic home in Ketuit, just let us know. You can look up the, the history behind that home on the website. And we need to thank Phil Odens for doing so much work on that. He, he is wonderful. We have a historic book club that meets at the library once a month. And we also have historic narratives, which I think are the most fun. And we're not finished with these yet either. But back in the 1970s, a wonderful lady who was my neighbor, um, Betty Peck, decided that we should preserve history by talking to some of the old folks in town. So if they were old folks in town in the 1970s, you know that they were here in the late 1800s. So they have some great stories to tell. So that's all been digitalized. Plus, we have some new people who are alive and living in the village right now, but are in their 80s and 90s, and they're telling us some stories um, about what went on, especially during World War II. Camp um, Can Do It was down off of Shoestring Bay in Ketuit, and they brought the Navy guys here who were going to land in Normandy to learn how to handle a boat and my friend Joan Bendick Smith, who is in her 90s and on one of these historic narratives said, oh, you should have seen it, it was terrible. And I said, were the boys really sad to be here? And she goes, no, they were all sick. They should have let, they should have let Massachusetts boys do that because <laughs> they all got seasick. Those are our programs, but we also have great events and they all involve food. So you might want to listen to this part. The first is June 10th. Um, you have to go on our website and you have to make a reservation, but you better do that because we have a strawberry festival with strawberry shortcake that no one should miss. It's absolutely delicious. We do it right outdoors here, June 10th. I'll give you the website in a minute. Be sure you come to visit us. We have an annual meeting for anyone who is a member, also in June, which always, everything we do, wine and food. We do an autumn in Ketuit, which is different almost every year, but it generally involves apple pies for sale and pumpkin pies for sale and some kind of contest. And um, usually some artisans from town um, demonstrating things that we do. We have quilters, we have someone who makes flies for fly fishing, all kinds of things that you can see when you come here. And I think the best thing that we do is called The Taste. And The Taste is mid-July here, outside, in the early evening. And it's not dinner, but there's, we have some wonderful food vendors who come and bring us a sampling from their restaurants or their food trucks. And you can come here. Uh, we also will have a wonderful, um, silent auction and something new this year um, it's hip to be square it's called and we have square paintings we hope to have a hundred artists right now we have 50 so we'll see what we can do if you're an artist and would like to participate let us know and their work their square artwork all kinds of mediums will be for sale for 75 dollars each so and first come first serve served so get right over there as soon as you sign in get over to the hip to be square and take your artwork before somebody else gets it and don't complain if you don't get the one you want and the last thing that we have right before closing is christmas in ketuit and that's a ketuit wide celebration we are a part of it we offer right in this room ornament making for children in the morning we have special sales at our gift shop and let me tell you black friday You've never seen a line like this in Ketuit because everything, everything gets marked down because we're closing for the, for the season. So it's the place to shop. And in the evening, we have a special party that we give to our members to say thank you. And the, the homestead is decorated and the candles are on and the food is here and the wine is flowing and it's good fun for everybody. So come and join us, please, our website is www.ketuithistoricalsociety.org. Check us out, we're great.
So I, I hope you, um, you like what we've got here and I would love to see you someday. And if, uh, if I'm not here, we'll just let, let them know that you're coming and I'll be happy to give you a tour.